think that Matt Common, the chief executive of Australia's largest bank, the Commonwealth Bank, when I sat down and spoke with him yesterday, I think he was being completely candid. Um, afterwards, you had PR people running from everywhere, basically saying, well, it's not exactly what he meant. And, you know, when we roll the tape, you'll see exactly what he did say. And really, the question was pretty simple. Have you considered actually having a central hub of having different banks in there? Just like, say, for example, you go to a country town these days and, you know, the banks have all disappeared and you might have to go to the post office mm. to get banking services from the Commonwealth, from the NAB and also from Westpac. Or, indeed, if you go into your local suburb these days, you won't see an automatic teller machine from mm. all of the banks. You'll see one. But the truth is that they've reduced, actually, the cost of uh, all those automatic teller machines if you used a foreign machine in the past. And, as a result, we can all go up to the other bank that we don't bank with and we can get our money out if we want to do that. But the reality is also that in coronavirus, people have stopped going to bank branches just as they've stopped going to retailers. So all the banks are pouring billions and billions of dollars into their online services, into their apps. And so the reality is they've got big costs in those branches. Um, and the reason why, of course, the Commonwealth Bank would be running 100 miles away from this right now is because it will provoke unions and obviously scare employees. But it's the economic reality of where not just banks but many other businesses sit in this post-coronavirus um, you know, period. Yeah. So let's just go to the grab and just you'll hear what he's had to say and you can make, for, make up for yourself as to whether really there's nothing here or whether, in fact, the banks have actually considered it. So we've seen, say, for example, a number of automatic teller machines drop because the, the need for them, the demand, has, has also fallen. Do you see the same thing could also happen with bank branches, that you could end up having one super centre for all of the major banks? It's potential, Ross, and it's something that the industry has contemplated. One, one of the limitations tend to be the, the technology across different banking institutions is quite different. So the, the integration and the cost to make that a proposition that would work for a customer who could be from any bank coming into a a single place but look I, I think certainly convenience and making sure because it's not I mean, digital is a huge part of our strategy and the way we serve our customers but it's not exclusively the way we we want to serve customers I heard it yeah it's something the industry has contemplated well, that's right so you know the yeah. point is that there are limitations there's competition limitations yeah. and there's technology limitations but you know the, the reality is the economic reality is if people are not going to bank branches if people are using apps yeah. if people are going online just like lots of other retailers the banks have got a big cost center that they've got to consider and so as i say i i consider that to be a complete moment of candor by yeah. the chief executive of the commonwealth bank well let's stay with the banks because they they worked their way into people's good books for the most part last year by allowing people to defer their loans yes. at the height of the pandemic some 500,000 australians uh, had their loans deferred Treasurer's on the show a short time ago. That number's been pulled back to 100,000. So that's a lot of people getting back to the way things were. But still a lot of people who need, need help. When you're looking at the end of March, as JobKeeper comes off, where, where do you think those numbers are going to go? Well, well, I think a few things happen here because the reason why those numbers have fallen so much is because you've had more open economies here than what perhaps have been yeah. overseas because the lockdowns have eased up over time. And I know certainly they've come and gone, but the, the reality is as more people get back to work, it doesn't matter how they're working, whether they're working from home or whether they're working, you know, sort of back in the office, uh, the truth is they can start to afford to pay their mortgages yeah. and they will. And the truth is that property prices actually increase probably makes people a bit more confident about their yes. finances and all that type of thing. But, you know, you're right. As JobSeeker ends, and really there's and now people. calls from the mm. tourism industry to try and extend it or somehow carve it out or something like that, but that's going to be hard for them to do. Um, it is going to be difficult because particularly in that tourism industry and hospitality as well and retail, because you've now got the moratorium for companies going broke coming off. Uh, and even though you have got new rules about companies going broke also introduced by the government, um, the truth is that there will be companies that will disappear and there will be mm. jobs that will disappear as a result of it. That's mm. tough. That's where the banks might again have to be a little patient because what they do not want is an implosion of property prices because that's yeah. bad for banks. Yeah. And this is the reason why right now, I think, with the, the throttle wide open on Australia's economy, interest rates at zero from the Reserve Bank, you've got money being thrown at the economy by the government. Mm. Uh, it is a situation where it's a time that people can get back to work, but we do know there are going to be some sectors that are going to be particularly you know, sort of vulnerable during this time, and especially for jobs. OK, Ross, we've got a minute left. Uh, I want to talk to you about the trading story of the week. It relates to GameStop. A lot of people are a bit confused by what's going on here, but uh, there is does appear to be a manipulation of the markets, if you like. 
it's a big come down overnight, though. 100 bucks was wiped off the price. It, it was. OK, I want to go really simply. GameStop uh, basically is uh, EV games in Australia. They own EV games in Australia. They sell games. So here in Australia, there's about 550 stores or something like that, yeah. or 300 stores, 5,000 uh, 5, employees. So what happens is that because nobody's going to those stores, again, short sellers are death riding them. So those short sellers have been borrowing the stock and basically selling the stock in the hope they'll buy it down. cheaper down the truth. Mm. Then what happens is these people on Reddit, young people who like EV games, who like, yeah. you know, sort of uh, GameStop and AMC is another one, they like it. Yeah. They suddenly sit there and go, hang on, maybe we'll actually start to buy a few of these shares to try and see if we can make... Then they get a bit orchestrated. So all of a sudden, lots of them start to do it. And then FOMO kicks in. Then FOMO kicks in. But then what happens is the short sellers suddenly see the stock price going up. They've got to buy back in. There's no stock to buy because the stock keeps getting higher and higher and higher. And that's what happened. But what happened last night was some of the broking firms that are very popular with yeah. these young traders like Robinhood basically stopped the trading or reduced yeah. the trading. As a result, you suddenly saw GameStop drop by 30% last night, 100 bucks, as you said. AMC, which owns the biggest theatre chain in the United States, it also fell by 48%. So, again, this is the short sellers, the traditional, if you like, investment houses versus young millennials buying stocks because they kind of think yeah. they can do it for the lulls.